Now that's a lot of wood. Wood isn't something usually associated with skyscraper construction, but a Japanese company has plans that may just change that. Japan's Sumitomo Forestry Company has unveiled plans to construct a 350-meter tall wooden skyscraper in Tokyo. The 70-story building would consist of 10% metal and 90% wood. The building would use a brace tube structure system made from timber and steel. This comprises a column and beam framework with steel braces inserted diagonally. This is meant to protect against deformation from forces such as wind and earthquakes. Sumitomo says the interior of the building will be made of pure wood and will contain 8,000 homes. The building will also feature balconies that span around each side. Sumitomo hopes to complete the building come 2041 to mark their 350th anniversary. The estimated cost of the project is 600 billion yen or 5.6 billion U.S. dollars. Mega projects, we know you love them. Welcome to the future. Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba will soon be serving toys for the big boys via gigantic cat-shaped car vending machines. Here's how it works. Customers use the Alibaba app to scan a car they want to test and are asked by the system to pick a color, enter basic information, and take a selfie. At the automated car vending machine, facial recognition matches the customer with their car order, which is then dispatched from storage. Customers are given three days to test drive the vehicle, after which they can buy directly through the app or arrange to test drive a different model. The company is planning to open two facilities in January 2018, one in Shanghai and another in Nanjing. The service is limited to users who have a Sesame credit score of at least 700 and belong to the higher tiers of the Alibaba 88 membership program. To curb abuses, users can only test a model once with no more than five test drives within the first two months of signing up. Uncrewed space plane nails drop test. Scientists dropped this space plane from a helicopter over the Mojave Desert on Saturday. The privately built autonomous Dream Chaser space plane completed a free flight drop test in California on Saturday, November 11th. It can carry seven passengers and looks like a smaller version of current NASA shuttles. Dream Chaser will use Atlas rockets to fly half a dozen delivery missions to the International Space Station by 2024. The test examined the plane during the final approach and landing phase of flight. The Dream Chaser was uncrewed, meaning it was flying on auto, but despite that, it pretty much crushed the drop test. Copy 8,000. Right, Good reader, all tenders. Approach and land, VTIs. Copy approach and land, VTIs are active. End of VTIs. Copy, VTIs complete. Copy 400. Landing gear. Copy gear deploy. Good gear deploy. My feet. Touchdown. The Norwegians want to build Europe's first underwater restaurant. Ever fancied eating seafood while surrounded by fish? Design firm Snohetta this week unveiled concept art for Europe's first subsea restaurant on the Norwegian coast. Its concrete shell looks like a giant half-sunken cinder block. Aptly dubbed Under, Inhabitat reports that the establishment will provide viewers with a panoramic view of the seabed. Diners will also be able to eat locally procured seafood while taking in the view of underwater life. Under is said to be heated via thermal energy gathered from the seabed. It will also double as a marine research center. It's going to be located in a remote village called Bali. And that's definitely not this Bali. Supersonic passenger flights will soon be a reality. A new airliner that boasts supersonic speeds is set to revolutionize air travel once it takes flight in 2023. Boom Technologies' planned supersonic aircraft will have a cruise speed of 1,451 miles per hour, 2.6 times faster than any other airliner. 
While a flight from New York to London would typically take seven hours on a commercial flight, the trip would take a little over three hours on a supersonic airliner. The Mach 2.2 aircraft will have 55 seats, each priced at about 5,000 US dollars for a round-trip ticket. A one-third scale prototype called the XB-1 will begin test flights in 2018 to demonstrate and refine the key technologies required for supersonic travel. Unlike the now-retired Concorde and its notoriously loud sonic boom, the Boom aircraft will have turbofans for noise reduction and won't be much louder than a normal plane. The company does have some hurdles to face before their project comes to fruition. Supersonic flights are still banned in the U.S., but with federal laws currently set up for renegotiation, that could soon change. The ITER nuclear fusion project is 50% complete. More clean energy than needed by all of humanity? Uh, yes please. Construction on the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor in southern France has reached the important halfway milestone. Fusion energy looks to replicate the same process that powers the sun by converting hydrogen atoms into helium through a process that occurs at extreme temperatures. The reactor will have to be able to sustain temperatures 150 million degrees Celsius, 10 times hotter than the sun's core. The massive donut-shaped Takamak reactor will be surrounded by giant magnets that take superheated plasma away from the metal walls of the container. This requires the magnets to be cooled to negative 269 degrees Celsius. The ITER is aimed at using hydrogen fusion to create heat energy that can drive turbines to produce electricity. Google planning to build three new underwater cables. Google is coming after our oceans. Google is planning on laying three new underwater cables in 2019 to help expand its cloud business. The first will run from Los Angeles to Chile, the second will link the U.S. to Denmark and Ireland, and the third will connect Hong Kong and Guam. Laying these new cable systems will help Google develop its cloud services in Latin America, the North Atlantic, and the Pacific region and Australia. Google now has direct investments in 11 cables that are planned or under construction. Here's a question. If these cables are supposed to help Google's cloud services, why are they being laid underwater? Something smells fishy. Israel is going electric. Israeli transit service Dan Bus Company is set to invest over 2.2 million US dollars in technology that turns regular roads into an electric power source. Electric buses in Tel Aviv currently need to be charged via cable at departure stations, but this could soon be unnecessary. ElectRoad has developed technology that powers vehicles from the road while driving, using conduction coils to wirelessly charge them through magnetic induction. With this innovation, there is no need for batteries or cable charging. It also boasts zero emissions, high efficiency, and low cost. The startup will be focusing on public transportation and will begin with laying larger coils underneath designated lanes to power the buses traversing the road daily. Eventually, Elect Road says it may even be possible to share energy between vehicles. Life in the fast lane. Traffic in Colorado's capital city could get seriously faster in the next half decade. Headed by tech firm Arrivo, the Denver High Speed Traffic Tube project will first build a test track following the city's E-470 toll road. The system will see a variety of vehicles, both passenger and cargo using it. The technology uses a combination of magnetic levitation and electrics to propel cars at speeds of up to 200 miles per hour. If successful, Arrival could potentially expand to connect with Denver's current transportation infrastructure. The company was founded by Hyperloop One co-founder and former SpaceX engineer, Brogan Ben Brogan. Power up, mate. After building the world's largest battery in the outback a year ago, Elon Musk is at it again with the Aussies for a new electrifying project. The South Australia government will be installing rooftop solar panel systems and Tesla Powerwall 2 batteries in 50,000 residential homes over the next four years. The equipment generate power and provide electricity for each home, while collectively forming a virtual power plant with a 250 megawatt capacity. Any excess energy will feed into the main power grid to be used to supply electricity to other homes or during an emergency. 
Participants will still need to pay for any electricity they use, but will save 30 percent on their electric bill. Their homes will also be protected from blackouts. The first trial for the project is currently ongoing, with systems being installed at housing trust homes first before being offered to other South Australian households.